Hello audience! In this video, we're going to be reviewing maybe the two most different books I have ever reviewed at the same time. It's the polar opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of authorial intent and accomplishment. First, we will start with The Black Tides of Heaven by Yi Yang. This book is... Whew. Okay, let's first talk about something here I think is pretty important. Some books are not meant to be liked by everyone. Not every author is trying to write the next Mistborn, something that's just going to be solid and well-received and super engaging to most people. Occasionally, an author wants to write something highly stylized, something that's going to be not what you're expecting, something different. The Black Tides of Heaven is deep in that territory. This book reads strangely. It does not handle characterization and narratives in a typical fashion. It's poetic as hell, and some people are not going to like it as a result. I personally think it's genius. The problem is, of course, you can appreciate genius and still not like what was accomplished still. So you can not like this for multiple reasons. You can not like the stylization, you can not like the intent, you can just not like the actual story. So I'm definitely gonna spend the most time in this review though talking about the world because it's where the most clear and concise communication exists and there's a lot of meat to chew on in these bones. So we have a magic system that's called Slack and essentially I would say it's a more spiritual, more ethereal version of a lot of what we've seen in other Eastern influenced fantasy worlds. Uh, Avatar definitely comes to mind. And one of the brilliant things really done about this magic system is there's time taken to really examine how different peoples will view this magic system existing in the world from different perspectives and it makes complete sense within the societal structures of how it can be viewed as a very utility based like useful thing or more of a spiritual approach and there's some really wonderful luscious moments taken with this magic system to let the reader just experience something beautiful but there's also some horrific things and I love that approach to handling magic systems it's a very well rounded it feels very three dimensional and having our two protagonists these twins so heavily tied into it and having different usages of it just all worked out fantastically in this book's benefit. There's also an element to this world building around gender that is not typically what you'd expect, where essentially someone does not have a gender assigned to them at birth, and instead they choose what their gender is going to be later on. These being twins, one of them chooses one gender and another. another. And even though they're twins, it's not a big deal because it's just not what this culture really focuses on. So I feel like a lot of people are going to be interested based off of that. This does have a very progressive view and approach to a lot of these things. Also, if you're not used to they, them pronouns, this book is going to get you used to reading and speaking in they, them pronouns. And really the takeaway is this book, The Black Tides of Heaven, just feels enlightened as a reading on several levels, spiritually, culturally, progressively. There is uh, very few things that have struck me recently as such a left hook when I was expecting a right. And I stand behind what I said, the way it's written, the prose, so much of the just doing away with conventions of storytelling, this takes a really brilliant mind to put together. I have complaints though, some pretty substantial ones, especially with narrative, because Again, I appreciate what's done. I don't think the author should change it, but in terms of my enjoyment, having whole character development, having character relationships done away with telling about what happened and just a summarization essentially happening at times, it's, it's frustrating because I get why it's done. It's just, ah. And there is elements to this world building that to me felt a bit jarring. There's some really interesting technological stuff, and maybe I need to do a reread to get a better vision of what was accomplished. It just felt like this more fever dream-like experience of reading. While it was to the book's overall benefit tremendously, it definitely also ended up blurring some lines that I would have liked to see a bit clearer. I recommend this as a book. I think it's awesome in many, many ways. My enjoyment's hampered due to how awesomely it accomplishes what it was setting out to do. It's interesting and just, I can't really say I'm super in love with any of the characters because of how much character was handled in this very subversive fashion. This book is an experience and that's the mindset I believe you should go into it with. Overall though, for this book, I'm feeling a very solid 7.5 out of 10 with an asterisk of high, high recommendation, especially if you're an experienced fantasy reader because this is another wonderful example of the potential of fantasy to go down paths that are not always walked.
And I do want to say, I just had an additional love for how this book handled power dynamics all the way to the mother figure of these two twins and how she, okay, not giving away plot stuff, but just right away there is a lot you can read into for many reasons of all kinds of angles and levels and layers and the comparisons you can pull to your own life experiences, our own cultural setup now, it's just all begging to be done here. But quickly, a word from today's sponsor. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare's the online learning community where you can pick up a bunch of skills to show off and share with your friends. You know, I get asked, Quite often, Daniel, how'd you get so talk goody? And I respond, well, years of taking things like debate and public speaking classes and practicing rhetoric. But a lot of people, especially adults now, don't have time to sit in a formal class or go out during the night and find something at a community college that can help them learn the same skills to present themselves and talk goody too. Well, Skillshare provides a brilliant solution to that problem where you set the schedule for your learning pace and you can do it anywhere on your phone, on the bus if you want to, to improve whatever skills you want to look into. If you want to get better at communication, check out Alex Leland's communication skills class. He's going to give you the essentials to get started to talk good. But I can't afford to go to college again. <laughs> Skillshare costs as much as some streaming services a month. So if you'd like to, it sounds interesting to you, you want to stop watching the same shows on Netflix and instead pick up some new skills, improve your life, possibly change careers, click the link in the description and get started now. And the really interesting thing I get to do here is now compare this book to Ringworld. So Ringworld is a sci-fi classic that I read and reviewed once before and did not like that much. I went into it again because I was thinking I'm a lot more experienced with sci-fi as a whole now. I'm more experienced with classics and opening my mind to how they're written. So Ringworld was going to be a walk in the park, I thought. Um, I'm more critical of it now in some ways. There are other things I appreciate to a greater extent, but Ringworld has problems. And okay, let's get into the pros and the cons, starting with the pros. Conceptually fascinating. For those of you who don't know, this is an extremely influential story in the wider state of sci-fi. Now, it does have that oh-so-typical ring world that we've seen redone and reseen many times. There is an alien uh, ring that needs to be figured out, and we follow humans who go on essentially a pilgrimage, a crew, trying to explore the mysteries of what they've found. And the ring world itself is truly fascinating. The existing systems, the exploration of it, the people, so much of the uh, greater implications and what this book provides in terms of the world building of this ring is just awesome. So all of that worked, the themes, the concept, the mystery I liked. The problem comes in with a very unfortunate writing style is what I will call it. It just was grating to me. Wow, I did not like how Larry Niven wrote this book technically. It wasn't like he made a lot of mistakes. It was just his writing style, his prose were And then the characters fail fundamentally for me. I thought they were extremely predictable or bland. There's definitely some humor and charm from them that got me at times, but they provided very little depth to the actual story or narrative and the handling of female characters, especially I would call abysmal. And jumping from the Black Tides of Heaven where there's a very progressive view of gender and handling of sex and all this stuff that was fantastic. And it's simultaneously seeing like, oh, all the cliches from classic sci-fi around gender and sex being very prevalent was just, look how far we've come. <laughs> I can see why so many people love this, especially for its time. It seems to be really creative and ahead of the curve, but it's not aging fantastically. And I know there's gonna be people who don't like, you know, holding up a book of its time to modern standards. And that's why I still praise many angles of this book. Like conceptually, it's very, very well done in the world and all that. But again, I have to be honest to my experience as a modern reader and reviewer, and especially just overall characters or disregarding with the mishandlings in some ways on that more like modern level, but just the characters and the presentation I found to not be super intriguing, even by comparing back to standards that Ringworld had at the time. I've read sci-fi from the day back then that had far more well-developed characters. Specifically, Tila Brown just provided almost nothing except for the shallow purpose she's tied into the story with, which I won't spoil in case you're curious for this, but it's 
about as 70s sci-fi as you can get. And then the main character himself very much so felt like an author stand-in who, of course, gets laid and all this stuff. And it's just... And, you know, looking back and seeing which classic sci-fi stories have lived up to the modern era and still are definitely worth reading and engaging, I think Ringworld, for someone who's a die-hard fan of science fiction, should certainly be on their read list. But anyone who's just casually interested in the genre doesn't feel the need to read every classic. I'm not going to be pushing this at people. It's... It's fine, and I respect it in many angles, but I don't think I can give Ringworld anywhere above a 5 out of 10. And once again, something about Ringworld, it's just kind of forgettable. I think it's largely because I'm a character-driven reader. I need punchy personalities and people who have real emotional depth to them and great arcs. The lacking of arcs here was impressive. Like, there's definitely attempts at it, but nothing landed home for me. Larry Niven's handling of character, I would go as far as to say is crippling. But hey, I'm sure that's not gonna cause any divisive comments in any way, shapes, or form. Uh, let me know, guys, let me know what you guys think of these books in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.